do this. Amen. Well, we, can, we welcome viewers across the nations. Amen. This is Liberty House of the National Church, all the way from the U.S. And you're watching us live uh, via YouTube uh, and uh, Facebook. If you miss any portion of this broadcast, please go to our webpage, Liberty House usa.org once again liberty house usa.org or go to our youtube channel and please make sure you type in our full name liberty house international church and then uh, there you go you can treat yourself to all the videos that we have there all right so um disclaimer i always like to say that because the message is an offense the message itself is an offense some people don't know that those who are not natural, those who don't read the Bible, they will not know that because they have not come across that verse in Scripture. The message itself is an offense. It's a stumbling block to a lot of people. And at times, um, the blame is shifted to the messenger, the one who is speaking the message. But that is not the case. All right? So please, I want to say that I'm not against you. Amen. Even though some words of mine may sound condescending or degrading, or like I'm coming against you. No, 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 no. That's not why I'm here. Okay, my mission here is to push you forward. Yeah. I love you that much, and I respect the offering of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice. I'm not going to insult the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Who am I? He called me in the first place. So I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation, and my delivery is unique. So don't say I didn't warn you. I warn you. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people have listened to uh, the Friday's message so far? How many? Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Hmm. We had fun Friday. Those, those who didn't show up, please show up. Today I'm, I'm trying to see if I can finish that. Hallelujah. Amen. But there's things going on in my spirit, so we'll see. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So let's turn our Bibles. Um, and Friday, this guy, what, I, what I was talking about is this. We are called to be role models. Models of what? Good works. Who can give me a chapter and a verse for that? Titus. Let's put our hands together for her. That's good. Gorgeous. Okay, so what chapter now? Three? I define opinion. What, what chapter? Chapter two? You see, if I if I say the verse, everybody, everybody, this time I've increased it. It's no longer twenty dollars, fifty dollars. You all give me fifty dollars if I give you the verse. Anybody? So I'm going to give it. Do you agree that you all going to give me fifty dollars if I give you the verse? No Google, please. Nobody should Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so seven, verse fourteen. If I'm right, bingo. <laughs> Is it there? 714, what does it say? Titus, uh, I'm sorry, 2, 2, 14. Thank you. You were going to give me the money. Oh yeah, but I'm right, it's, it's 2, 14. Is it there? <laughs> okay, it says it's to be zealous. Oh, so not, uh, not a pattern. So, 7. If I'm not mistaken, mm. am I right? Yes. Okay, fifty dollars. Start collecting them now. <laughs> Who is going to bring the offering basket? Am I right that it's seven? It's two seven. Okay, let's all read what is there. Read. In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity reverence incorruptibility so here you go the bible says in all things this is to believers in all things in all situations what is expected of us we should show ourselves role models of what good works good works and then in teaching so that means you have to study to know the word because if you don't know the word you can show yourself as a role model because you don't know, but you have to know. That tells us that nobody should remain the same. Everybody should be growing up spiritually. Everybody should become better than the way they started. They should be more mature than the way what they started. That's your responsibility. 
My responsibility is to keep feeding you, is to keep teaching you. Your responsibility is to accept the word that I'm giving to you. You act upon it, you work with it, you conduct yourself accordingly, and then you experience what? Growth. Now, it says that showing integrity. What is integrity? Honesty. Honesty. God is so honest. Can I have an amen? amen. One more time. God is honest. Only some few people. God is honest. Amen. Oh, is it because I'm not doing gymnastics? <laughs> if God is honest, it's the same spirit that is in God that we have. So the spirit that we have is the spirit of truth, which is what? That spirit is also what? Honest. So if God is honest, we have a spirit which is honest. What should I expect from you? Honesty. Amen. Integrity. Amen. Don't be double faced. Two faced, double faced. Which, which is better? Two faced. Don't be two faced. In all things, we should see honesty. And we have too many believers who don't demonstrate honesty. Amen? Amen. Do you know anybody like that? Those who didn't come to church today, probably somebody that, you know, it's a joke, you didn't laugh, or it's dry, so you didn't laugh. Okay, that's fine. All right, and then reverence, that is respect. But a pattern of good works, a model of good works. So God wants us to be models. But what is it? We see people who at the beginning, they turn to be models, they are doing it right, they have it together, and everybody is seeing it and applauding them, and aspiring to be them, praising them and all that, giving them accolades and all that. Then all of a sudden, then we see them going down. Have you seen people like that? All of a sudden, their zeal is going down. All of a sudden, their enthusiasm is going down. The quality of their service, maintain the good works. Because um, in chapter 3, it says we should, be, we should maintain good works. For those who haven't seen it, let's, let's have it there so they know it's there. Is it 3 8? Titus 3 8. Let's have it. Hallelujah. This is a faithful saying. Let's all read together. And it's not 12 yet, so please read like you are not hungry. Read. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly. So I'm doing it. So he said, Pastor, we heard this. Yes, it says constantly. So I'll keep doing it. I'll keep drumming it till I see everybody working it. So it says, I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God, so we are talking about you, you have believed in God, should what? Be careful. Why be careful? He didn't say, should maintain good works. I said, be careful. Why the word be careful? Because you can be talked out of what? Maintaining good works. Somebody can easily walk you out of that. Somebody can easily get you off track. Somebody can easily stop you from doing what? what? Maintaining good works. Right. It says be careful Amen. to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Amen. So not just a role model. It's your choice. It's your responsibility. Being careful. Being cautious. Being on guard. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To maintain good works. You see, we have too many casualties. We have too many leaders that come on the horizon or come out on the, what do you call it? Come out on the, what should I say? What is it? Come into the limelight. Come into the limelight. Mm. And then everybody's adoring them, praising them, go with them. Then all of a sudden, this one's before. Why? They were not careful to maintain what? Good works. At times when people begin to praise you, it gets into your head. If you allow it to get into your head, before you realize your head will be detached from your neck. That means you are getting higher and higher. And then what? Pride sets in. That's what it is. Then you forget that it's God who is keeping you to maintain the good works. It's the one who has energized you. It's the one who has given you the ability to do whatever good work that you are doing. He's your source. He's the one that you are leaning on. The strength comes from him, not you. So if it gets into your head and you don't give the credit to God before you realize you are coming down. Oh yes, that reminds me. I'm going to say something that is gorgeous about when you turn 60. Alright? Okay. When you turn 60, 
I just realized it. I have to share this with you. Don't rush yourself to turn 60 if you are not there. Just be patient, please. <laughs> when you turn 60, the wisdom I'm going to share with you. You see, God answers your prayer quicker than He used to. Do you know why? You get closer to God. <laughs> That's a joke. Let's move on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Amen>. So, if, <laughs> if you are not careful to maintain good works, then somebody's look, somebody who is disgruntled, somebody's dislike of what you are doing, somebody's comments that is off, somebody's criticism, and what have you. You see, we all have our opinions, and at times we all express our opinions, and at times it doesn't come out well, and that alone can stop you. And uh, you say in your heart, you say in your head, that's it, it's over. I'm not doing this anymore. You are not being careful to maintain good works. I like the way you are quiet. It's sinking, right? It starts from the home, like I'm saying. Husbands. Husbands. They start to do something, and then somehow the wife does something that the husband doesn't like. Then all of a sudden, it gets to them. And normally, you know what is affected? It's not their spirit. It starts with the flesh. Mm. You are so natural. You see, your feelings, you are hurt. Your emotions, you are hurt. You are offended. You are frustrated, disappointed. We don't handle these negative things well. We have to learn from God. Can you imagine the number of times that God gets frustrated if he does? He doesn't, but I'm using that to show you. Frustrated. Annoyed, disturbed, upset, angry, and whatever you want to add to it, at us, what we do. But how does he handle it? The way he handles it, that's how we have to handle one another. In times when we feel upset, we feel we are treated or whatever, we have to handle it slow in love. We don't have to forget. We received one command. The command is to love one another. Amen. That's how we're going to be careful to maintain the good works. The command is to love. And love doesn't do harm to his neighbor. When you shut down and you stop your service, the good works, the quality of your service goes down. Uh, I'm not going to give them 100%. I'm watching them. I just, you know, now I'm going to cut it down. You know, and then we just reach to 80 and see if they're going to change. If I see a change, I'll go back to the 100%. If I don't see it, okay, I'm going to reduce it. Then what do we do normally? We learn how to detach or disconnect from people. And what is so terrible is when God connects you to somebody, you must take God to disconnect you. Let me say that again. When God connects you to somebody, it has to be God to disconnect you. We resist God, we oppose God unconsciously. And at times we do it in a rebellious way. We know we are coming against God. And we still do it. That's how much the flesh is on the throne. Let's have a... This is not what I'm going to share. But it's fine, it's good. Let's have a, Colossians 3, 5. You see, there's something to maintain to be careful to maintain good works, you have to give up certain things. Let's all read this together. Read. Therefore, put to death. Wait. Is it in the Bible? You see? Put to what? Death. Kill it. We have to kill certain things in our lives. Put to death your members which are on earth. It says what? Fornication. What will cost you? Go there. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness is every impurity, impure motives. It starts from within. That's uncleanness. Passion, evil desire, and then what? Covetousness, which is idolatry. And when we follow our feelings, we have an image. We put God aside, or we need to worship something or somebody. And most of the time, you are not worshiping somebody. You begin to worship yourself. 
Because you put yourself on the throne. Now, Jesus said, if a man will come after me, let him deny himself. If you are denying yourself, if I pinch you, you won't feel it. You are so self-conscious. Instead of being in touch with your recreated spirit and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So, you are so fleshy, carnal, or you are carnally minded, which is what? Death. Bible says that in the book of Romans. Carnally minded is death, but spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. So, because you are carnally minded, you look at everything, you filter everything, you interpret everything, you assess, evaluate everything carnally. And we are hurting ourselves. And we are hurt, hurting each other. Because God didn't do any mistake for creating you and putting you in your family where you have your parents. Even if they did come together the right way, they are still your mom and dad. Alright? If they even made a mistake, God still blessed their coming together and blessed them with their children. And therefore, that's the principle of God. He put you together for a reason. So it's up to parents and the children to work out the plan of God, the system of God, the order of God, to reap the benefits that uh, uh, the benefits for which you put them together. Because every relationship has what? A purpose. If you are in this house, you know these things. Every relationship has what? And every relationship has what? Definition. Every relationship has what? Definition. Come on, come on, come on. Every relationship has what? Definition. Again, every relationship has what? Boundaries. Can you say that every relationship has boundaries? Come on, why are you speaking like, come on, like you don't want to speak. You are not Jane. Come on. Say it. Every relationship has boundaries. Hallelujah. And the last, every relationship has what? Benefits. Come on, say it. Every relationship has what? Benefits. So at times, now I'm bringing it here. If God can connect you here, but I know how we do it. God can connect you, and then when you become God, you kick God out, and you do your own thing. And most of the time, it's based on feelings. Am I saying it right? It's feelings. Feelings. It's not like somebody's doing something that is not in line with the word of God. It's, it becomes about me, myself, and I. And then instead of staying within the boundaries, the structure that God placed you in, then we begin to kick against that structure. And therefore, when we work against the system, the benefits that are to come from that very relationship, we don't get them. Judas never became an apostle. Even though God called him, Jesus himself handpicked these ones, Judas Iscariot, as an apostle, he never became. We all know the story. What was the last thing that he did? What did he do to, what did he do to Jesus? He betrayed him. He had every opportunity, he had every red kind of a carpet to become. Because the rest that Jesus called, they became. Paul was not even with Jesus, who was Saul, and then became Paul. He wasn't with Jesus. He came by way of revelation. But he became an apostle. And Saul, I'm sorry, Judas Scarab, hanged around Jesus all these years. He was so close. That's why Jesus said, the one who dips his hand in the same bowl, the one who is close to me, a friend of mine, is the one who is going to betray me. And this is what goes on in homes. It comes from the father at times. It comes from the mother at times. It comes from my son. It comes from my daughter. When it comes to the local assembly, it may come from a crooked pastor. A pastor who is quiet. A pastor who doesn't know what he's doing. A pastor who is for his own empire. He has a hidden agenda and abusing and using everybody in the congregation. They are the ones who do that. And what bothers me when such a fake quack pastor hurts people, then they are stopped. Maintaining good works goes out of the window. They allow this negative thing, negative experience from this quack so-called Reverend Pharaoh to affect them so deep that they cut, they, they cut all ties 
with Jesus Christ. They cut all ties with fellow believers. I've come to some of that know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You, you are aware of some of this. Say amen. amen. And they said, no, I don't want to be part of any local assembly anymore. And I'm going to give you some of the stories. I've handled, uh, it happened quite recently. You know, quite recently it happened. This is fresh. You know, these people said to me, oh, I've been mem I've been a member of uh, so many churches. I've decided not to, be a, not to be a member of any church anymore. And I understand where they are coming from. Because they have legitimate reasons to say that. When you, when you go through abuse, like some people who have been in relationships and they've been abused, they will tell you, I don't want to even marry you anymore. But that's a human thing. Can you say that? That's a human thing. That's not a God thing. And I want us to do the God thing at all times. I'm going to say that again. I want us to do a God thing at all times. Amen. Don't follow your feelings. You follow your feelings, but before you get there, a principle kicks, uh, kicks in. Before a husband or wife, you begin to be lovey dovey And you are feeling it, so you are saying, I love you. When there's no need to say, I love you, you are saying, I love you. Fair enough, say it. But it's based on the principle. Don't say it because you want something from your partner, then you say it. That's manipulation. That's what it's called. Loving somebody has nothing to do with how you feel or how you don't feel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One person said amen. I'll say it again. I said, loving somebody has nothing to do with how you feel or how you don't feel. Amen. Because love is not feeling. Action. Amen. You decide. I'm supposed to love and I'm going to love regardless. So you're not looking at the person. Oh, they're supposed to do it. They didn't do it. Okay, I've changed. I'm not going to love them. When you begin to do this, then I'm going to love them. Jesus didn't say, love your enemy. Are you going to co sign something? I said, Jesus didn't say, love your enemy. Amen. I'm talking to you as believers. He says, love your enemies. And some of us, we've decided, Jesus, okay, you know better than me. But this one, I think I know better than you. I'm not going to love my enemy. That's what we do as Christians. When we do that, we shift from a place of maintaining good works. Look, feelings can be dangerous. I'm telling you. If we don't, if we don't bring it in the light of God's word, feelings can be dangerous. You know, some people feel some things, even though it's negative, immoral, and whatever, they follow it. Feelings. So if you are going to go by feelings, will be a hard mess. The whole world will be a hard mess. We go by principles. Hallelujah. So put to death. Put to death. Let's have it in the old King James. This is New King James. It says mortify. What do I have here? Um, let me is it there on the screen? Okay, so let's read together. Read. Multiply, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. Okay, multiply. So, I want to find out this word, multiply. At times, when you go to the Greek, it makes a lot of sense. So, I'm trying to go into the Greek. Galatians 3, what, 5? And let's see if it's, if it's that simple. Put to death. How do you put something to death? You deprive it of power, right? That's it. It says, let nothing uh, have power by you. So, multiply. I'm going to give you what it says. Wow. Subdue. 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 What does it mean to subdue something? To subdue. To break to subdue. What does it mean? Huh? Okay, let's have it. Google, subdue. Just Google it. Let's look at that, what it means. We have power, we have dominion, we have grace, we have anointing. And if the anointing that is within you cannot subdue certain things that are negative in your life, then I don't know what anointing can subdue. Hallelujah. That's why you have the grace, the anointing. Anybody there? Yeah. 
Overcome or, or, or to overcome or to bring under control. Wow. To bring under control. I'm begging you. 2022. Look, do all the nonsense you can do. This is what I'm going to say. 2022. 31st of December 2022. Stop it. I'm giving you a long road. Because if I say stop it now, you will stop it. You say, okay, have, have this die hard. It's going to take me some time. So I'm giving you some time. Even though His grace can suddenly bring you to a place of change. And then now, you are going to change the way you talk. You know, some people talk loosely. You trigger them or let them be upset a bit. And what surprises me is this the foul language that they use. They use the F word believers. I wonder what happens to the Holy Spirit. If a believer is firing like that, the F word, and the S word, and showing disrespect to a fellow child of God. You know the Bible says, do good to all. Do you know that? Do good to all. So when it says do good to all, that includes unbelievers. Be careful to maintain good words. Doing good to them is respecting them enough to speak to them in a loving manner and politely. Mm. I didn't hear any amen. Wow. I said speaking to people lovingly and what? Politely. Respectfully. Amen. Don't don't give me that rap. Oh, pastor, pastor. I lost it. I was so upset. I was so upset. Well, what happened to the Holy Spirit within you? Put to death. Do you know what I'm saying? You have the ability to put that feeling under control. Whatever was said, what was that what was there, you have the ability to put it under control. You see, you know when something is going against you. And really, you are getting there. You know what happens? That adrenaline. You see, it's like something is rising up. A demon is rising up. The monster within you is rising up. You feel it, right? Before it gets to your throat, yes! <laughs> no, that's human. You feel it. Before it gets to your throat, don't allow it to get to your neck. <laughs> if it gets to your neck, you will not be able to control it before your eyes dry up. And at times, you see, it comes out, then you apologize for it. So in the first place, you know, it was wrong. But let the Holy Spirit lead you. Amen. Let the Word of God guide you. Amen. Be gracious. Amen. And be loving to every person. Amen. 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 This is our responsibility. We have to do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So it means to make dead, to put to death. Slay! That's what it says. Slay! And then he uses this. This is serious. He says, of an impotent old man. An impotent old man. There's no way he can produce a seed. He can get a woman pregnant. No way. It's impossible. That was where Abraham was. But God made it possible. So what is he trying to tell us? When you notify, when you put to death, there's, they are subdued, there's no way they are going to show up anyway. Amen. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit to be able to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see? Hallelujah. Yeah, go for it. Go back and listen to Friday's message. I said some things, but it's from the Bible. Alright? So I'm taking you to Hebrews chapter 5. And hopefully I'll be able to get into the message. Hebrews chapter 5. We are looking at the 11th verse. Of whom we have much to say. I turn on my piece of Of whom we have much to say. And uh, hard to explain. Since you have what? Become dull of hearing. Dull of hearing. Some people have a challenge. The way they listen. That's why we keep talking. You have to listen with a clean heart. Amen. Tell me something. Tell the person, listen with a clean heart. Listen with a clean heart. You know what we do at a time that it's not okay? When somebody is talking to you, instead of just following what they are saying, oh, 
You heard just a word. Oh, what is he trying to say? Does it mean this? Does it mean that? What's going on? But I only, I only, I only said this. So instead of listening to what is being said, you are processing one word. And everything that is coming out of the person, you are missing it. Yeah. Bible says, be what? Quick to what? Quick to do what? Yeah. If I give it to you, you owe me another $50 each. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> These are things that we should know. We should know them by heart. Be quick to listen by what? Slow to speak. And I like the way it says slow to speak. Quick, listen. Quickly, listen. Slow to speak. That's the book of James chapter 1. That's what we have to do. We have to grow in this grace of listening. When you listen to somebody talk, that's why somebody can lie before you and you can't tell. You have the Holy Spirit and somebody's lying to you and you don't catch it. Because you are using your natural senses. Instead of relying on the Word of God. You judge everything, you hear everything based on the Word of God. Amen. Give everybody the benefit of doubt. Mm -hmm. Listen with a pure, clean heart. Yeah. Like I always say, don't say I write somebody off. I don't trust them anymore. Let them give you a reason not to trust them. But just trust Him. Hallelujah. Amen. And rely on the Holy Spirit. So when you listen, that's how you listen. Amen. Follow what they are saying. If they have not said anything, don't go there. Mm. Unless every word, if you say, oh, like our pastor just will tell me, instead of saying, uh, what? You are ignorant of truth. He says, say it, uh, you lack knowledge. See, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you listen to my message. Wow. <laughs> so, you see, when somebody says you are ignorant of truth, is it not the same as you lack knowledge of the truth? Is it not the same? No, I'm asking, is it not the same? It's not a trick question. Is it not the same? Okay. So, somebody will say, you know, when you speak to me and you say, you are ignorant of what the Bible says. I feel insulted. But when you tell them, oh, you have no knowledge or you lack knowledge of what the Bible says, then they take it. Why? They haven't put to death. They haven't killed. The <laughs> one needs to be killed. And that's what it is. It's the same thing. It means the same thing. But at times, you see, then this is your own world. And why am I saying this thing? Certain things, Bible says it. These are Bible words, not like man's words. Bible words. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so when you are done of hearing, we know dog, we are not going to go there. Let's go to 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, for though by this time you ought to be what? So God expects us to be growing. Amen. So the way I'm teaching now, I remember I was teaching uh, what do you call the foundation class. I don't have to teach that forever. People within, you have to become faithful, you have to become available, you have to become teachable as I equip you so you take over the teaching of the world, foundation class. Right. Or what some people call it, membership class. They need to you begin to teach it. Right. Saying that I'm going to go off a bit, but I have to say it. A lot of local assemblies are not running and functioning according to New Testament pattern of the church. They are not running like the apostolic church, the early church. Let me give you one. It's going to, it's going to shock you. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you are ready? Yeah. You are not going to be offended when I say it. Yeah. Okay. No disrespect to anybody. In the early church, the people were able to rise to a certain level. Give me uh, Acts chapter 6. From verse 1. They rose to a certain level. They were able to say, look amongst you. People who are full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom. It means that some people have progressed in maturity. You know what I'm saying? It says now, 
In those days, so there was some kind of conflict, complaints against the Hebrews because of the sharing, daily distribution, how people are taken care of. Do you see there? Let's go to verse 2. The wheels, the way they were taken care of. Verse 2, what does it say? Read. Read. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So I've said this over and over and over again. My duty, my job, my role in your life is to what? Serve tables. Oh, okay. Wow, you are following. My role is to do what? Teach you the word. Feed you the word. Hallelujah. You don't have to make me do something else. Please don't tempt me to do anything else. If you are on my side and you are on my team, you have to ensure, you have to help me, you have to push me forward, you have to encourage me, to admonish me, to do what? Stay on my lane. Stay in my lane and do what? Teach you the word. One of the ways that you encourage me is making yourself teachable. I've dropped one now. One of the ways to encourage me is to make yourself teachable. Because when you start in first grade and you start in your first course in college, you didn't argue with your professor. You made yourself teachable. You made yourself available. Wow, this guy is preaching good. Preach, Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But it's only when we come to the church in the body of Christ, we think we all have in James Bible. We all have the Holy Spirit. We all are children of God. And so there's some kind of disrespect. But my Bible, if you're a good Bible student, in Hebrews chapter 13, we are not going there. But in verse 17, what does he say? Aha, uh -huh. you see now? Because some people don't know, they don't, they don't abide by it. We'll come back to this. Let's go to the Hebrews chapter 13, half time. Verse 17. What does he say? Obey. Okay. Okay. okay, let's read together. Read. Obey those you see, you are not reading it like you should read. Now you are thinking. Read. Obey those who have rule over you and be what? Submissive. Do I have rule over you? That's the spiritual, genuine spiritual, uh, what do you call it? Leader has rule over the congregants. Yes. So he says, obey those who have the rule over you and be submissive. I don't have to force you to obey me. Am I right? Yeah. You agree with me? Yes. Do I have to force you to obey me? No. But do we do this? Can you say from your heart that you are ready to obey me? That's why you have to come to me. And I'm going to say something and say it very well. You can remain in this house. I'm narrowing it down. If you look at Christ to everybody, at times I just to say, just generalize it. But at least I'm addressing you like Jesus does at times. So, if you don't come to a place to obey me, the way the Bible wants you to obey me, you know what is going to happen? You can be here for 100 years, because I'm going to be here like too. And I'll be teaching, but you cannot experience growth. You cannot mature. You cannot touch lives the way you want to touch lives. Judas, nada, zero. He never touched any life because he never obeyed Jesus Christ. Judas is carried. Until Peter, who became the head of the church when Jesus left, until he obeyed Jesus, Peter never touched any life because he took the whole people back to fishing. In John chapter 21, when you read from verse 3, he said, yeah. he took the whole people back to fishing. Jesus had to appear to him again and remind him. That's what I do when I stand here. I'm constantly reminding you of what God expects from you. Because the enemy is tricky. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Yeah. So, Peter couldn't do it until he obeyed Jesus. Right. Jesus said, do you love me more than this? I call you to be fisher of men. Not to go to the shore and look for fishes. Yeah. And until he obeyed Jesus, he couldn't touch the line. Until he denied himself, yeah. he could not obey Jesus. Yeah. And that's where some people are. 
called yes. They come to a church, and I know, because you came from an abusive background, now you're taking the law into your hand. I'm going to protect myself. I'm making sure the pastor is going to abuse me again. And the loyalty, the commitment, the respect you give to the one who abused you, this pastor who is genuine doesn't even get half. What did he do? He's not the one who abused you. That's why you have to test the spirits. When you realize that this pastor has your interest at heart, the track record is there. And whatever he's doing is not to harm you, it's not to hurt you, but to push you forward. His word becomes like God himself speaking to you. I'm not trying to elevate the office of the pastor. But anybody who speaks the word of God genuinely, sincerely, that's what it is. It's life and death. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, and be submissive to them. For they watch over, they watch out for your souls. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But nobody, nobody does this. I won't say nobody. Only a few really do this. And it's something that baffles me all this while. This is the Bible. But they will quote other scriptures when they are following their feelings. They will quote other scriptures. They won't quote this one. You get it? Now I can take you with other scriptures. Where it says you have to follow. You follow as the person follows Christ. As the leader follows what is the word of God, you follow him. If you follow the word, when I go off, you know. That's why I always tell you, if I tell you something, don't take it because I'm your pastor. Check it with the word. If it's not there, don't do it. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how simple it is. So that's why some people are not going. So it bothers me that in the local assembly, you ask somebody to do this, you say, Pastor, I can't do it. Pastor, I mean, I want to serve in this area. Pastor, you see, all my life I've dreamt of this and I've dreamt of that. It's not like that. When you go to work, have you realized that times you are called to do certain things? And do we tell our employers and our lead that we can't do it? Do we do that? Do we do that? No. Let's stop the dream. Let's be serious. Because everybody should be up and doing for growth, expansion, increase to take place. That's the apostolic church. So let's go back to the Acts of the Saints that we're talking about. The way what in verse 2. So the apostles were not going to leave uh, Acts 6 2. They were not going to leave the preaching of the word. That tells me something. Everybody has to be focused on what is expected from them. Like I'm saying, some people don't know that at 1060, and so they have to celebrate me. And they have a problem. I just don't get it. I'm 60, you have to celebrate me. The small money you are going to give me or something you are going to do for me, then you have a problem with me. I just don't get it. It's serious. So that tells me something. To me, it speaks volume. So it's like, then you are in my life to take from me, to abuse me, to use me. You know, one of the things that is expected from spiritual leaders that are good, everybody expects spiritual leaders that anytime they are called, they should answer the phone. Am I right? Mm-hmm. That's what, okay. Let me, let me leave that alone. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go to the next one. And I've been working seven days in a week. That's what I've been doing. Seven days in a week. You know, certain times you don't pick your phone. You know how to put it on silence. At times I call some people, it takes two days or whatever before they respond. But me, you call me and you don't get me. If you don't get me, it will be just minutes. Understand my role in your life. It says, therefore, brethren, seek out what? From where? Outside? Outside? But where? Within the congregants, among you seven men of good work, it means that there were people there that didn't have good reputation. Full of what? The Holy Spirit, wisdom, whom we may what? Appoint over this business. It's not the business of pastor to run some of these auxiliary or ministries, departments in the church. So this is the first time feeling the 
feeding people, feeding the poor, whatever, the less privileged, whatever. This is the first time in the New Testament church. It happened. So they selected people. Now what we have is become a money-making venture. So people take themselves out of the church. In every local assembly, you see, Jesus was doing it. That's why these guys were able to do it. Jesus said the 5,000. Did he call somebody from outside? It was from within. He fed the 5,000. So we should have such ministries within the body of Christ, not outside. Like I said, the evangelistic ministry, or whoever he calls himself as an evangelist, should not be outside the body of Christ or a local assembly. He should be one of the elders, one of the officers within the local assembly. And so he has the, uh, the, the anointing, the grace of an evangelist. And then so when he speaks, he stirs up. He rekindles that fire for evangelism. It's a model for evangelism. The grace to evangelize. You see, now it's imparted to the people. But not that he, he, he disconnects and then go and start so and so evangelistic uh, ministries or outreach. We had it wrong for years. When the church was established, it was never like that. You go study as of the apostles. It was never like that. Now, let's read you see. Let's look at the next verse. So Philip, uh, what? Philip and uh, what? Stephen. Philip, for instance, went to Samaria. He preached the gospel. But when he preached the gospel and people received, it is isn't now starting my ministry. He wasn't an opportunist. We have a lot of opportunist preachers in the body of Christ. They cover their game so much people don't even see it. And these people are building following. Even though they are not genuine. Because like I said, a lot of believers are carnal. So carnality pulls them. It's carnality. It draws them into it. They are sucked into it. If you are spiritual, there are certain things you won't follow. I'm telling you. So what happened? Let's go over the next verse. The next verse. But we all will give ourselves continually to what? Prayer and to the ministry of the word. Who is that? What group is that? What group will give themselves continually to pray? And to the ministry of the world. What group? Oh, why are you guys doing that to me? What verse is this for? Let's do verse 2 so we get it straight. Read. The 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we. I'm reading alone. I said, Let's read together. Come on. Let's start from the beginning. Read. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and set tables. So who are those speaking here? The twelve, the apostles. Okay, so let's come to the next verse. What did they say? Therefore, who is still speaking? The apostles. Five people. Seven, right? Let's go to verse four. Who is still speaking? What did they say? Read. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So let me say to you, some people here, you know, you may be one of them. When you wake up, you don't even have five minutes for God. Because when you wake up, the alarm fails. You didn't wake you up. <laughs> you are in a hurry. You have to get out of the, the house. You don't have time. If the pastor should also work like that and he doesn't have time, do you think people will be taking care of spiritual? No. So in his wisdom, this is work. This is full-time kind of ministry. This is a vocation. It's also a profession, if you want to call it that way. They should keep themselves continually, not to go and work somewhere. Don't you start. Don't tell me I know some pastors who work somewhere. Let them do it. Let him do it. The Bible that I read doesn't tell me to do that. So me, I chose. I was working when he called me, told me to stop. Even though I knew it, it was in the Bible, but I was still working. So he told me stop. So if they want to work, because their congregants are stingy, and they want, to, they don't want to support them, so they are forced to work. And now I realize every pastor now has become an entrepreneur. 
they are taking our ways to what to do to support themselves. Because people do not want to be responsible in taking care of their spiritual leaders. That's a shame. Let's read on. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 5. The same please them, so they pick people. Why? They pick people. Alright? Let's read on. Next verse. Philip was one of them. And whom they said before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. They laid hands on them. So this is what we do. Food program. It's to stay here. We call you do something. You begin to do it. Like we always say here, when they're giving the job, grow it. You are put in charge. You are, grow it. Don't come out with excuses. Because I'm not going to stand in your way. If I stand in your way, how is this house going to grow? Do you get it? I want growth. I want to see a search. I want you to see, I want to see you personally grow. Because your personal growth, you know, affects, you know, whatever comes to the body. Then that will affect the ministry that you do. But if personally you are not growing, then your ministry also will not be growing. So personally, you have to experience growth. And growth doesn't come in a vacuum. There are bits and pieces. You have to be connected well. You have to be well connected very well. You have to have the spirit of the leader. The grace that is upon the leader, you have to have the understanding. That's why Paul said, I have no one like-minded like Timothy. He said, like a son, he served with me in ministry. So when you don't, when you're not like-minded, how can you serve in the same vision? And Satan has used this over and over and over again for decades, for centuries. Satan always has a different agenda. And he will use somebody within their ministry. Oh, why are we doing this now? Why don't we do this rather? Why don't we? No, the church is not a social club. You know, like association, everybody brings their two cents. Let's do this. That. No, no, it's not like that. Jesus came with a clear cut word, vision, objective, a goal. Like I said on Friday, our job is not to work, fill this building. Some people, their concern has been, why is this building not filled? Your concern should be, what am I expected from God to do? That should be your concern. Am I changing? Am I being transformed by the word that I hear? Am I doing my portion? That should be. The Bible says when everybody does what they are expected to, they are expected to do, then there's growth. Yes. Amen. And that's it. That's it. When you are out of order and you are doing what you want to do, nothing in line with the word, how do we grow? You are fighting against the same body. Do you get it? That is simple. Wow. People feel spot, uh, sports arenas. And they feel them with junk. So look at how a lot of Christians that we have, conference after conference, and some of them, they are still the same. Majority, they are still the same. Because they feel these places to boast. Oh, there were 50,000 attenders. And then what? And then what? Jesus didn't focus on multitude. He focused on transformation of hearts. When he gets one person, he focused on this one person to make sure the person gets the message and is transformed. That's our objective. It's not parking buildings. So whether people come here or not, whoever shows up, that's the person God has given to us. That's the person we are going to work on. We will not use gimmicks. We will not use techniques that are outside the book to get people here. No. One person years ago, he paid. He wanted people of a certain color to be part of his congregation. So he went to them, he approached them and said, no, if you show up in my service, I'll pay you $50 some years ago. It's come to this. It's come to this. That's not good. It's the anointing that draws people. It's the word that will draw the people. And if you yourself, the word is not getting to you, what can your own word do? If God's word cannot get to you, what about your own word? And unless the Father draws somebody to this house, they cannot come. Unless those are who are agents of the devil to come to check us out. <laughs> But it's the Father who draws, according to John chapter 6. It's the Father who rules people, who guides them, just like you came. He will direct you, he will guide you to this place. 
If it doesn't, it doesn't matter how. You go on somebody, you tell them, you invite them, you, you know, bribe them with the dinner, with the lunch and whatever, and you buy them clothes, you buy them nice things, you eat them, they will come. All right. I mean, you know you. Can somebody get you like that? <laughs> it takes the Father. Hallelujah. So that's the first time, you see. It wasn't pastors who were, who were, who were in charge of that. And when people in this congregation they are running away from every job, they say, Pastor should do it. We are even trying to get people to do prayer. And so they don't see it as a privilege, they don't see it as a blessing and honor for them to be trained to live prayer. Then they want pastors to do it. And look, think about this. When you are doing it, we are helping you to, to, to sharpen your prophetic gifting. Because you see, you are so used. To the way prayer is done, wherever you came from. That was wrong. We are here, we are teaching you the proper way of intercession. Because when you intercede, I'm going to drop those things in there so you understand. That was what I'm going to do. When you intercede, there's divine intervention. Because when you intercede according to the word of God, and I'm going to say that, people want to intercede because God has been righteous. God, I fasted before coming to the Lord's prayer. I've, I've done my, uh, what do you call it, quiet time. I've sent the scriptures. I've put even all the prayer topics on my phone. So I don't forget about everything. And now we are doing it. So God, you see, I'm signing the God now. No, no, no. Get yourself out of the way. You see, that is not it. It's Jesus who is the mediator between God and man. Not you. So you've been taught wrongly. You understand what I'm saying? It's Jesus. God looks at Jesus, not you. So you are coming that God, Jesus laid down his life. And then you are partnering with Jesus. So you have to be on the same table. You have to be in sync with Jesus. That's why the Bible says, if we ask anything according to his will, not what you think. You ask according to his will, then he hears us. That's 1 John 5, 14. So when you pray that way, God hears you. When he hears you, what happens? There's a what? Divine intervention. It says when you say to this mountain, Mark 11, 24. So when you say to this mountain, I mean, 23. Move. If you don't doubt in your heart, it's going to move. Yes. So there's divine intervention. The power that we use comes from, from God. Yes. So when we when we pray, intervention takes place, then we intercept. Yes. That's why you bind and loose. Yes. That's why decrease and declaration comes in. Yes. Then you say, I rebuke this. I rebuke that. I command the sickness out of your body. I stop this now. Like some people are praying now. Oh, Father, help, help Ukraine. Father, help Ukraine. Father, deliver, deliver them from the Russians. No, 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 no. You are praying the wrong prayer. You see? He's giving you authority to stand against Putin himself and come against the spirit that is ruling Putin. That is it because it's satanic. Because he comes in to uh, kill, to what? Well, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Don't take it. What? Well, that's what he's doing. So you don't stand there and think you are, you are, you are so prayerful. No, I've, I've been fasting three days and I'm asking the Father to return. No, no, no. You stand your authority and say, I rebuke the spirit. That is, I work within the pudding and whoever they are and all that. Yes, you do that against your own husband. You do that against your own wife. When you are being foolish and stupid, you rebuke the spirit. You don't say that uh, I'm overwhelmed. Now I'm even confused. I don't know what to do. My husband has changed. Oh, my wife has changed. Oh, I can't believe my daughter is so good and this and that. Then you are standing there. Jesus. You've not been taught properly. This is what apostolic ministry does. This is what we are bringing to the table. Yes. Because we are taking away the tradition. So yes. coming to pray is not that. Uh, so that let's all pray for those who are authority. And let's thank God. Uh, 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 say, oh, what time is it? We have five minutes. Okay, let's uh, now pray for this and that. Uh, uh, no, no, no. You are praying with the Holy Spirit. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. That's why we call it prophetic prayer. Amen. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you. Yes. We are praying for those, who, those in authority. But as you are seated here, do you know what Bible specifically needs to do? Glory, hallelujah. Mm. Well, I'm saying, no, why does it send people now? I'm like, I'm in the US, we can't take care of this. Why? But you don't know what the mind of Christ is, what the will of God is. So when you stand praying, interceding, when you do it properly, God can speak through you. Amen. And then that is where prayer becomes what? Powerful. Hallelujah. You see, also what things when you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall see them. So when the Holy Spirit leads you, you will hit the hammer right the, uh, what, on the head of the knee. But look at what we pray. 
The way people pray. When they are praying, they are yawning. Look, you are not serious. They are praying. Thank you, Shalom. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. Jesus prayed with seriousness. That's what I'm talking about. People have been stalled in the church. That is why he's raised people like me to bring the church back to order. Seriously. So we are going to do it right. And that's why I'm getting what? Push back when I teach these things. But truth will always be real. Let me close with this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to teach you. We want to teach you Bible principles. When you see the power of God, if you are satisfied with the tongues that you are talking, blah, 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 then you prophesy and prophesy that day. You haven't arrived. Come on now. It's just the beginning. Yes. You haven't seen anything that had the head healed. And you settle down. You become lazy. That's what I was talking about Friday. You are lazy or you are stupid. But we are called to be diligent. I'm telling you what the Bible says. In uh, uh, what? Hallelujah. Hebrews 6 12. 11 says we should not be slothful. Like other people. We should show diligence until the end. Hallelujah. And then follow people who through faith and patience yes. inherit the promise. Yes. We need to be diligent. Yes. You know this story. I'm teaching about the law, I'm teaching about grace. I'm saying we are ministers of the new covenant. Do you know that they brought somebody before Jesus? They would cut her in adultery. You know that account? Yeah. Go to uh, 10. I mean, John, John 8. Let's close with that. And then there's a big lesson that some people don't know. Because Jesus at the end, he said this. They wanted to sow the woman. John 8 from 1. They wanted to sow the woman, right? Then Jesus wrote something. Then he said, anybody who is without sin, she will what? Cast the first stone. Did somebody sow the woman? No. Nobody. Why? Because under the law, Everybody is guilty. Those who want to go by the law, and I keep saying it, you will listen to this humble servant, messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you put yourself under the law, you are guilty. The only thing that clears every man and every woman, every boy, every girl, is faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what brings you to right standing. We now have peace with God. According to what? Romans chapter 5 1. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Not the law. We are dead to the law. We are married to Christ. Amen. And a lot of ministries that they have a mixture. I'm saying it and I'm going after this as the Lord gives me, you know, the leading to do it. I'm going after because if we don't correct this mess, we are not going to have anything. How many people, apart from the prophets, apart from the judges who walked, saw the miracles, how many people in the Old Testament saw the miracles or saw the power of God or God used them? It's in the New Testament that every believer in Christ can be used. The power of God can flow through you. And this is what we are teaching people. And still don't want to put me in a box. You are the pastor, you have to do this, you have to do that. No! I'm teaching you to do what God wants you to do. I have my role. You have to be what? Teachable. Let's read on and see what it says. See, the Lord, everybody is guilty. So they put it through the soul. Without a sin. He's trying to teach them that you are under what? Grace now. Amen. Then what did he say? He said, woman, go. Yeah. Those who are accused, where are they? I don't condemn you. He says, go and sin no more. So under grace, there's no condemnation. If you believe in him, there's no condemnation. Grace empowers you. He said, go and sin no more. Amen. Empowers you. You know, to be who God wants you to be Amen. and to do as God. Grace gives you the power over sin. Yes. So far as the law is preached to you, the knowledge of sin, the consciousness of sin is what is on you. That's why I have to now some people, they can't even hack. They can't embrace. Because under bondage, condemnation, and whatever. One, one lady who came to us years ago, she says people have demons, so I don't want to have them. If you are a believer, she was a minister too. You are afraid. You are light. It's not your light that should run away the darkness. You are afraid to have people. They say you are not going to get their demons. You should save your home. Don't come into the congregation of the righteous. <laughs> oh, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord. There's, there's so much that we have to learn. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Are we in John 8? So you know the story. He says, Go and see no more. That's grace. It's beautiful. Grace doesn't condemn you. That's what we're teaching here. Grace empowers you. Because you have the Holy Spirit in you. Please, I'm begging you. Be pliable. Turn yourself loose. Be faithful. Be available. And those who, when we have meetings, you know you are not at work. You are hiding somewhere. You do something you have no business doing. Show yourself up in this place. And be trained. Be encouraged. You see, when, you, when we meet like this, we, we get encouragement from one another. God is so foolish to design this. So do it. Ah, well, I mean, some people can be creepy. If you are being creepy, if, if you are not doing what the Bible says, you are the one who is creepy. Am I right? Creepy people, they don't do what the Bible says to <laughs> Okay. Let me end. Everybody that experienced, whatever they experienced, say the inheritance, they endured. They endured. And this is a person who don't, they don't want to endure anything. So we rise. They, 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 they got out to tell me that it's time. So with that, I'm going to close this by charging you with the words in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and 13. Start from the liberty where with Jesus the anointed one has made you free. And do not be again entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. Love you guys. Hallelujah.